just here to greet the Olympians because I absolutely love the Olympics. They're gracious. Uh, they took the time to come out here and sign autographs. Why would you come out to Pearson today? For the children. I just thought it was something that they would enjoy. Tessa, she's my favorite figure skater. What did you make for her? I made a rain balloon bracelet. We're here to uh, welcoming home our daughter, Laura Fortino. We were there. It was um, amazing uh, to watch the games live. The atmosphere was beautiful. The venue was uh, very receptive and welcoming. This beautiful lady here just created this beautiful book. But these are all photos of the athletes she met four years ago coming out of this exact door. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, and now she's getting all the any returning athletes to sign it. I think it's incredible. I thought, you know what, if any returning athletes are going to get them to sign it for me. Have a nice day, sir. Nice. Nice to see the athletes coming home. Now, two of the big ones did stop in Toronto. They chatted with the media very briefly. We're talking about Tessa Furcher and Scott Moore. And then they wing their way home to London and a hero's welcome from the people who watched their meteoric career from the first days. I think they might be coming out. Why are you guys down here? Why is it so important? We love Tessa and Scott. Of course, they're Canadian heroes, but they're so inspirational and their story just encourages everyone to go after whatever it is that you're passionate about. We felt this love and support when we were over there in Korea. We, we knew we weren't alone on the ice and uh, to get home and see everyone and, and share in the celebration, it's really special. This is Adelaide! We've been thinking about this moment being back home uh, since we won, so to bring the gold medals back, uh, it's feeling unbelievable. So we haven't come down off cloud nine is what we've kept saying and uh, even though we haven't slept in probably three or four days, it's, we don't need it anymore. Virtue and more, of course, made history half a world away in Pyeongchang, helping Canada win the team figure skating competition and ending their amateur career with their second gold in ice dancing. Of course, they won gold in Vancouver and then two silver in Sochi. So those two medals from Pyeongchang make them the most decorated figure skaters in Olympic history. But tonight at the London airport, it was about sharing their successful careers with the fans who have been there from the start. Those quite the pair of skates, are those yours? <laughs> I've had them since I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> so they're what, 10, 15 years old? Yeah, right, I wish. <laughs> you got them on a drive. How, yeah, how does that feel? Wonderful. I will engrave, get them embossed. I'm now waiting for Scott's. We'll see if we can get them over here. Scott, there's some skates that need to be signed over here for you. Yeah. <laughs> you owe me. <laughs> You have the matching pair now. I do. Be careful. It's complete? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you going to do with those now that they're signed? When was the last time I was on them? I said 12. And 12, 12 hours ago? <laughs> I wish, yeah. For nearly an hour after touching down, the exhausted pair signed autographs and posed for photos with anyone and everyone, no matter what they had to say. What are you going to do with that flag? Well, I'm going to put it in a frame. Nice. In your room or out in the living room? I think I'm going to put it in my room for I remember them. Nice. That's a good call. And if you get Scott on there, you'll never, never get rid of it, right? No. Never ever. Sorry, oh, young man. That's an awesome shirt. Thank you. He's got it all figured out, eh? Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. Did you watch the Olympics? Yep. That's pretty neat. Huh? What was your favorite event? The speed I like the speed and even though speed skating may have been number one for this young boy, his golden meeting with Moyer and Virtue was likely overtaking him. As for what's next, well, a much-deserved rest, reunions with friends and families, but not for too long. The pair are planning to tour and are considering other options as well. So I guess our flight details got out. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Pretty good, pretty good. A little, a little tired from the day, but so this is so exciting for us. Uh, we, we've been thinking about this moment being back home uh, since we won. So to bring the gold medals back, uh, it's feeling unbelievable. So we haven't come down off cloud nine, is what we kept saying. And uh, even though we haven't slept in probably three or four days, it's we don't need it anymore. Yeah, what a warm welcome to come home to. And we felt this love and support when we were over there in Korea. We, we knew we weren't alone on the ice, and uh, to get home and see everyone and, and share in the celebration, it's really special. 
Were you expecting a crowd like this? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> we, it's a little overwhelming. We didn't know what to expect, but this community has always uh, really supported us for our whole career, and uh, we've relied on them, so it is it is crazy to see the amount of people that came today. And, uh, obviously, it's it's been over a week, but uh, there's, there's still living the Olympics, which is so much fun for us. Yeah, it's so heartwarming. What's next? Uh, we'll regroup for a few days here at home and see our families and uh, we'll choreograph some show numbers and then we'll head in on tour. We're in Japan and then all the way across Canada. So we'll stay busy and we'll stay on the ice performing, but in a different capacity, which is exciting. Is there anything you would use to describe the this year? Not really. That's been the struggle. I mean, it was different than any of our other Olympics, but what surprised us was... How none of the magic had worn off. You know, if anything, it's more. You, you feel more patriotic, and I think we understand a little bit uh, more what it means to represent Canada, wear the flag on our back, and um, it was a special month for Tess and I. Uh, just being a part of that team again was our whole goal, and uh, to be able to have the four skates kind of of our lives and, and bring home two Olympic, two Olympic golds for this country and for our communities. It's pretty huge. How do you come down from the high of the last few weeks? Do we have to? Yeah, exactly. No. <laughs> we're going to have to. I don't know. That's a, that's a great question. Um, we're not going to try and do that anytime soon. I think there's a lot of people, obviously, that family members and that couldn't be in, in Korea with us. and uh, Obviously, we understand that, but we'll be looking forward to seeing them now and all the people who have always been there to support us. I think that's how you come down. You hang out with them and uh, you got to share the memories. I mean, it's been a long time with Tess and I, so... Uh, we're enjoying every single moment. You guys get a lot of jet lag? Right now? Uh, well, we're fresh off a 24-hour travel day, so uh, I'm sure it will hit us later, but um, this helps. That's, a, that's the least of our worries. Yeah, it's uh, it's just remarkable to be here and, and see everyone. Was this one more special than once in the past? It's hard to really put that label on it. it it's special and sentimental because it's been 20 years in the making and it's sort of the culmination of it all competitively and it couldn't have gone any better for us. I mean with carrying the flag, having the individual uh, medal and the team event sharing that with our friends and uh, we're so proud of our performances but I think that's mostly a testament to our team for having prepared us the way they did. Our coaches are truly the best in the world and our B210 team in Montreal are you know, our off-ice staff and um, I think the best feeling was really taking the ice knowing that we had done everything possible to prepare for those moments and as an athlete that's all you can ask for. Same for you, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, many people here are from Ilderton, you're back home in London, in Canada. How do you feel? Oh, it's so nice to be back on home soil. Um, you know, after a long month away, it, uh, it feels nice to touch down here and we can't wait to celebrate with our communities here. What's the celebration? Sorry. How special was it to have Well, I mean, it was, it's an interesting, uh, there are new coaches, obviously, but they've had their own Olympic moment in 2006 that didn't end the way that, uh, you know, they wanted it to, and it's been great to kind of reflect on that and kind of build our own Olympic moment together, and uh, part of this two-year plan to come back was made very special with them, because... I mean, they started that whole idea, and we started working with them and started to fall in love with the sport again, and um, we enjoyed every minute of working with those two, so we're so happy that they're there with us, obviously, sitting in the kiss and cry and sharing the moment. Might there be some coaching in the future? Great question. There's a lot of questions about our future that we have to sit down and figure out, uh, but who knows? What's the celebration until? We don't have to train anymore. What do you, what do you get to do as a celebration on your back home? Just spending time with our family and friends. Yeah, and, uh, that's changed. We've, we've loved training in Montreal for the past years, but we really haven't made it back home very often. So it'll be nice just to have some quiet moments, and uh, I'm sure some champagne will come out. But uh, <laughs> you know, just get to debrief and catch up with our teams. Were you guys expecting such a big crowd here? No, at all. No, it's, I remember coming home after the Vancouver Games, and there were sirens, and I turned to Scott, and I was confused and worried that something had happened. And he said, "I think those are for us." And, you know, you think I would have learned that our communities are this amazing and so supportive, but uh, I certainly wasn't expecting this kind of turnout today, and it's wonderfully touching. And what's the future like for you, too? Uh, how's the, how are you going to continue this relationship? Well, Tess and I are lucky in figure skating that we get to uh, 
go on tour now or do the Stars and Ice Tour in Japan and Canada and then a couple more in Japan. Um, it kind of takes us all the way up to the summer. So we're excited about that because uh, we love skating together, we love working together. So to be able to uh, do that maybe without the pressure of, of the judges and making sure that every point counts, uh, I think that'll be liberating a little bit right now for us. So we're looking forward to that. That's the, kind of the next chapter for us and then we have to kind of see what the future holds. Yeah. Perfect, guys. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much for coming. When I was going into my free program yesterday, I was terrified all day. Um, that program has been super strong in practice, and I wanted to be able to show that program as best as it could. Skating after Alina, I knew that I was going to hear a really high score, and that was going to test my abilities on how much I could stay focused. Um, but I, I was very much prepared for it, and when I got into my starting position, I knew it was what I could do. Once my music started, I felt completely at home. All the nerves went away. I felt in control. I felt strong. I was very much ready to push until the end of the program. When I made the small mistake on my LUTs, I did a mental whack in the head and said, okay, we're not going to lose it now. I was um, going strong, and I wanted to have two clean skates. And... That's exactly how I felt, and at the end of my program, I was enjoying so much of it, performing that program the best that I possibly could here, and I knew that it didn't matter what the placement was at the end of that competition. I wasn't going to be happier than I was in that moment. <laughs> I definitely skated a lot better than I did in Sochi. Um, I was very much just happy-go-lucky in Sochi and skated just because I could. And here I had a goal in mind. I had a goal that I wanted to be my best. I wanted to fight to make it onto the podium. I wanted to be a part of Team Canada in that gold medal. And I fought with everything I had for that. I don't think my mom has yet stopped crying. Um, I could vaguely see her crying when I was on the podium at the rink. And then I could see her crying on the podium last night. And when I saw her, she was um, still crying. So I think it's just an inevitable amount of tears right now. I did. Um, yeah, it was super, super good feeling just standing up there and hearing the national anthem and looking over at my family and they're all crying, making me cry. And um, it felt like once I landed my run, like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders. And then to get this one put back on was pretty nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just been carrying it around with me and everybody keeps wanting to see it. And it's just, it's overwhelming. It's an awesome feeling. Even before the final, I was saying that I wanted to showcase to the world what women can do in the half pipe. And just to take a victory lap of straight airs is just not my style. So I wanted to keep pushing it and do a bigger run and up my own score. But at the top of the pipe, um, Trent and my coach, kind of we both realized at the same time that I had won. And he started tearing up and I started tearing up and I was like, hey, I can't hug you anymore because I'm going to cry and I need to stay focused. And then obviously lost my focus a little bit on the second hit. But yeah, it was an incredible feeling. Fell, looked back up the pipe and was like, I'm, I won. I'm okay. It's, it's fine. And still went down and did that 10 at the bottom just because it's a show and you got to give the people what they want, you know? So, uh, yeah, it was awesome. From when Sarah Burke was pushing the sport and pushing amplitude and pushing for equal pay for women and all that, the sport's just grown exponentially. And um, we all wouldn't be here without Sarah. But also, I feel like yesterday, we all pushed each other. Like, I think the level of riding yesterday was the highest it's been at any contest. I'd love to go see hockey, the women's hockey. Um, I'd also, I think I'd like to go see curling because it's just something I would never do outside of the Olympics. Um, and just go check out the coastal village, go to the Canada house, and. Have some fun.